You know, I had a team, uh, a team get together and do some research for me today, and they have confirmed for me that today is Martin Scorsese's 80th birthday. Happy birthday, Martin Scorsese. Wh whatever you think about his comments about comic book movies or whatever, there's no denying. He is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time with some, with some of the most beloved, amazing films ever made. He turns 80. I remember the first chance I had to meet Martin Scorsese. Um, they were doing, I can't remember if it was the 40th anniversary of Taxi Driver. It was either the 30th or the 40th anniversary of Taxi Driver. I can't remember. And they invited me to come to New York for a special screening at the Directors Guild in New York and then to interview Martin Scorsese. Now, I, I'm i not a big fan of going to New York and I hate flying. And so that's, a, that's like a five and a half hour flight from LA. So, and Dennis doesn't like flying either. But I needed Dennis to come to to produce and be the cameraman and all that kind of stuff. So we're like, oh, okay, but we don't want to do this. But for Martin Scorsese, of course we're going to do it. So we go to the airport. We get on the plane. We take a turbulent laden flight from L.A. to New York. Get off the plane. Turn our phones on. And the first messages we get is, Scorsese can't do the interview now. <laughs> because there was there was some... There was some controversy going up that broke that day about him and New York State and taxes or something like that. So his publicist canceled all interviews. So we're like, what? So we were like standing on the ground in New York. We still got to go, though, to the DGA screening. We still got to meet and talk to Martin Scorsese, which was great. But listen, again, regardless of what you think, I know he's been in the news a lot lately for making some stupid comments about comic book films or whatever. But be that as it may, this guy's incredible. Now, Variety in celebrating the birthday, the 80th birthday, Martin Scorsese, who is still going strong. They decided to put together their list of what they call the top 25 Martin Scorsese movies. And I got to tell you, when you start going down this list, like, of course, you know, in your head, he's one of the greatest of all time. But when you start going down the list, you're still like, my goodness, he's really one of the greatest of all times. They list silence as his number one film. You know, I've never seen it. It's you know the what? only one of his films I haven't seen. I've always said this is a very underrated film. It's now I would not put it at the top. I wouldn't even put it in the top five personally, but it is a very underrated film. Uh, so you had Adam Driver, Andrew Garfield, Liam Neeson uh, with powerhouse performances from all of them. So they've got that at number one. Really interesting. Raging Bull. That's going to be in everybody's Martin Scorsese top five. I, I, I doubt you'll meet somebody who won't have Raging Bull unless they haven't seen it have Raging Bull in their top five. Uh, we move on from that. Goodfellas. A lot of people. This will be number one. For a lot of people. Then we go all the way down to number four, The Departed, which I think is my favorite Martin Scorsese movie. It won Best Picture of the Academy Awards. Still the only Best Director Oscar that Martin Scorsese has yep. is from The Departed. And uh, that's, of course, it's a remake of my all-time favorite cop film called Infernal Affairs. Uh, number five, Age of Innocence, which I'll be honest with you, before I was reading this list, I had completely forgotten about this movie. You know, I love this movie, and uh, I've always had to defend my love of it, but it's great. I watched it recently. It's still great. I love Michelle it. Michelle Pfeiffer, the goat, Daniel Day-Lewis in it. Uh, then we go down to number six, Taxi Driver. Again, I think most people would probably have this in their top five, but Taxi Driver, all-time iconic film. Then we go down to Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore from 1974. That I haven't watched that one since I was probably like, oh, God. 18 yeah. or something like that uh number eight we were just talking about this film the other day the yeah. last temptation of christ number nine i know for a lot of people this will also be in their top five martin scorsese's the king of comedy this movie's incredible uh number 10 the wolf of wall street here's here's something funny this is how good martin scorsese is he's got a movie like wolf of wall street and a lot of people barely have it in the top 10 yeah dude this movie's awesome. And then we just, I mean, Gangs of New York is which awesome. Which I also love. Cape Fear, which is incredibly awesome. I love that. Shutter Island, which is maybe his second most underrated film to me, is Shutter Island. Uh, you got Bring Out the Dead, which is incredible. This is one I haven't seen. Uh, Kundun, I, I can't even remember the pronunciation. This is the one on this list. There might be two on the list, but this is the, at least the one on the list that I have not seen. So I'm not familiar with this one, to be honest with you. But they got a list as number 15. Then you get into The Irishman at number 16, a movie that was nominated for Best Picture of the Academy Awards. Number six. But that's just the thing here, Rob. I mean, that's the career 
And we haven't even gotten to Hugo, which I thought was absolutely spectacular. Color of Money. Color the of aviator Money. Aviator, I love. I mean, aviator? Like, it's Tom Cruise movie. The Color of Money is not even apparently going to make the top 20. No, they maybe. do. They have it. Uh, where do they have it? It is on this list. Here. By the way, Casino deserves to be way higher than that. Casino, well, there's Hugo. Um, oh, there it is. Color of Money. They have 24? Color of Money. At number Come 24. Hey, it made the list. But I mean, that's just <laughs> that just goes into again about just how incredible this list is like Hugo's at 22. The Aviators at 21. I mean, the movies on this guy's New York, New York is at number 20. That is, I mean, that's why a guy like Scorsese and guys like Spielberg are so rare. Where it's not until you start going through their list and you're like, oh, good luck even putting together a top 10. Yeah, I mean, can. I think you could have moved New York, New York to the 25 and brought those other two. I would have. I would, I would say that too. Maybe. But let me ask you this, Rob, on the 80th birthday today. Of Martin Scorsese. I, I think it's undisputable he's one of the greatest of all time. What are one or two of the films for you that we ask, somebody stops and says, what's your favorite Martin Scorsese movie? What one or two or maybe three pop into your head? Oh, well, that's, I mean, you know, the, the first thing that always pops in my head is Taxi Driver. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I'd tell somebody today to watch Taxi Driver. Goodfellas is pretty timeless. Yeah. I love the first hour of Casino, I think, is the first one of the greatest first hours of any movie ever made. I love most of the Aviator till Howard Hughes gets a little too nutty, but it's still great when the when the uh, Spruce Goose takes off. I love that, and Color Money is really great too. I, I mean, I couldn't even begin. And The Departed is awesome. I can't even, you know, The Departed might have my favorite Mark Wahlberg performance in it. He got nominated for an Academy Award for He's that. He's so good in that movie, and and who would like? How I, good was the dynamic with him and Alec Baldwin? Oh, it's just the best. I mean, it's it's. Yeah, I, I, his movies are just. I, I mean, I think like Kundan is 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 a good movie, but I wouldn't put it just because I don't I don't have as much fun with it, mm. you know. And and Last Temptation of Christ again, Martin Scorsese's movies are fun to watch, and I would say if you want to watch for modern audiences, Wolf of Wall Street, because Wolf of Wall Street is a very contemporary film, it's a sprawling epic, and it's hilarious. It's that scene where he remembers driving home and then you actually yeah. see how he drives home. That's one of the great sequences ever. Hey, Jonathan, I know you're a big Scorsese guy as well. What, like when, if I were to ask you one, the one or two instantly come to the top of your head of Martin Scorsese films. Uh, it's going it, to, knee jerk reaction is going to say good fellas. And it's like Rob said, it's like, you're so safe in, 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 in uh, suggesting good fellas. Cause more than likely people are going to appreciate that when you do something like taxi driver although i think is um is a masterpiece that's going to be a rough first sell for someone who's not familiar yeah. with his work even even uh raging bull i mean i don't, I don't really like the character, uh, the character yeah, that's is, the thing i mean he's got two different kinds of movies for me he's got movies that are important and they're great silence is a great movie uh but it's not Fun? No, no doubt. No, no. I, I will. I, I think it's tremendously underrated. But I agree. It's not a fun movie. Where Scorsese, when he's in fun mode, Wolf of Wall Street, right. Goodfellas, Casino, um, Color of Money, King of Comedy. These movies are just delicious to eat. Like to sit down there and consume. You know what? Did Mean Streets even make it on that list? I didn't see. I didn't, it. See, I didn't it. see it on the list. Wow. No. You got to put Mean Streets okay. on that list too. All right, guys. Question is for you on this the 80th birthday of one of the masters maestro martin scorsese what do you guys think what's his best work to you what are the movies that instantly come to mind when you think of martin scorsese movie whatever you guys think jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there hey guys we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video masterclass you guys know we have been sponsored by masterclass and we love them here at the john campia show for giving us in-depth information on a wide variety of topics from the world's best experts with masterclass you can learn from the world's best minds anytime anywhere and at your own pace you can learn the art of filmmaking from james cameron improve your cooking skills from gordon ramsay or learn how to make compelling youtube videos from marquise brownlee with over 150 classes from a range of world-class instructors that thing you've always wanted to do is close Closer than you think. I was recently watching through the independent filmmaking course by Spike Lee, and I found it fascinating that not only did he cover the broader topics like working with actors, but he also gets into finer details like working with a cinematographer and how to properly audition a DP for your project. It was fascinating. So guys, I highly recommend that you check it out. Get unlimited access to every class, and as a John Campia Show listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go
Go to masterclass.com slash campia now. That's masterclass.com slash campia for 15% off Masterclass.